Hi guys, and welcome to my channel, Moxie DIY in Java. I'm Michelle. Today, we are making some more Easter DIYs to go along with the ones that I have made in previous videos. So grab your cup of coffee or your favorite beverage and join me. As I get my coffee ready, I wanted to let you know that the DIYs in this video are part of the minis challenge hosted by Crafted by Corey. I'm gonna have the playlist as well as her channel linked in the description box. I also wanted to extend a warm welcome and hello to my subscribers, as well as those of you who may be new to my channel. If you like what you see, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And with that, let's get started. For this DIY, you will need beads of multiple sizes, scissors, twine, not pictured, tape, and pliers. Here I am making a pseudo needle out of uh, wrapped tape around the end of the twine. This will help me thread the beads onto the twine. We are going to start with the largest bead, then moving down in the bead size until we get to the tiny bead. This should give you five beads on this particular tail of the cross. Now we will push our twine up through the second to the last bead. So we're gonna skip the tiny bead and move to the smaller bead and thread that twine through the rest of the four beads. Now these beads are locked in place and we can move on to the first arm of the cross. We will use one small bead, one smaller bead, and one tiny bead. And we will start with the small bead and work our way to the tiny bead. Now we will lock these in place the same way we did the other ones, skipping the tiny bead and moving straight up into the smaller bead and then the next small bead.
Here we will make the top of the cross using a small bead and a smaller bead. I twine at about the foot mark, so you want to make sure you have a lot to work with. Now we're going to lock the top beads in place using the same method, and we will have now both ends of the twine coming out the middle of our cross. I lost my footage of this, but you're going to take the shorter end of the twine and lock the top beads in place again, but you're going to skip the larger bead and go up through the small bead so that the small twine is at the top of the cross. Now we will create the X wrap effect with the longest twine. You're going to wrap it diagonally from the top to the bottom, then around the arm of the cross, bringing it to the top of the opposite side, and now diagonally to the bottom and repeat. Once you're happy with the look, you're going to take the twine back up through the larger of the two beads and up through the top bead. Now I'm just going to burn off all of the little hairs and strays that I don't like on the twine. If you are at all worried about burning yourself or um, the project, you don't have to do this. This is personal preference. Um, if you are a child, please don't do this at all. Make sure that you have an adult do this for you. But uh, again, it's personal preference. You don't need it. Now I wanted to add the white flowers to the middle of the crosses. So I'm going to clip them very close to their bases so that way there's a flatter area for me to glue them to the crosses. These crosses are going to be bag tags for some Easter bags that are going to some special people. Now we're moving on to our carrots and parsnip, <laughs> which is the white one. Um, I have it laid out with which beads I used. Obviously you can use any size beads you want, but you want to make sure that you have it in um, from largest to smallest. Once again, we're going to start with our largest bead and then work our way down. and we're gonna lock them in place using the same method.
you reach the end and cut your twine, you want to make sure you leave at least six inches, leaving the tape on your pseudo needle on your twine. And now I'm going to show you how I created the chippy um, textured paint on my parsnip. I'm going to use these three sets of paint and create a wash of sorts. This method is pretty messy so you want to make sure that wherever you do it you're okay with getting paint on your surfaces but luckily this is water-based paint so it cleans up really easy but basically you're going to hang your carrots on whatever surface you're using and you're just going to dab the paint on the top bead and let it drip down to the bottom beads and you're just going to keep layering it on over and over and over Once they have dried for about five to seven minutes maybe, you're going to wipe them off and then repeat the same steps. Once they have dried completely, they will look like this. This was some leftover greenery from a wreath I made, and I thought it looked very similar to carrot tops. So there's a little hole from where I removed it from the stem and what we're going to do is use that pseudo needle again and push it through that hole and bring it all the way down the length of that twine. Next we will tie a tight knot around the base of the greenery and then we will start a knot but not tighten it and then add some hot glue to the center of that knot and then tighten it on the hot glue, locking it into place. For this DIY, you will need yarn of your choice, coordinating felt, six flower pots, a tassel or pom-pom maker, homemade or bought, pink puff paint, and not pictured beads and hot glue. I saw this set of five cookie cutters on Instagram and knew I just had to make it for my home. I pre-made all of the pom-poms on this palm maker. It's a really interesting one because it allows you to make multiple palms at the same time. I got it at Walmart. We're going to attach the mini white palm to the base of the large palm. Now because I have already attached the head to the large palm, we need to find where I wrapped it. 
So here I'm just looking for the yarn that I used to wrap it, which is right here. And we're going to take the tails of the white palm and put one underneath the wrapped big palm. <laughs> I hope this is making sense. And then you are going to tie them into, I think I used a triple knot on this. This will be making the cotton tail of our little bunny. I forgot to mention how I attached the small palms, which are the heads of the bunnies, to the big palms, which are the bodies of the bunnies. When you are done making your pom-poms, you end up with two long pieces of yarn, which is how you wrapped the yarn around it to make the pom-pom. You're going to tie all of those pieces of yarn together, and that will attach the heads to the bodies very similar to how I attached the cotton tail to the bottom. Now we're going to be making the ears. I am using charcoal felt for the two gray bunnies, and then I will use white felt for all of the rest. Now for this guy, we'll be making his feet out of the white felt. All I'm doing is cutting a generic egg shape, and then I will form it more into a foot. Now we're going to cut teeny tiny hearts to make their little cute noses. Now we'll use the coordinating felt to make a wide open heart to create their chops.
I love how the facets on these beads make their eyes sparkle. It's so cute. Onto their ears. We're just going to put a tiny bit of hot glue on the base of the ear, the flat part, and then taco it together and hold it until it is cooled and dry and it creates a more dimensional ear. Don't be like me though. Make sure you have finger protection for the entire time you're doing these ears. It'll save your fingertips. The original pots I got for these bunnies were way too small and these ones are just a little too big so I used this excelsior grass to help lift them up a little bit. I love how each of these bunnies has their own personalities, but what do you think? Did I accomplish this? I added bows to mine to give them a little more color. For this DIY, you will need multiple sizes of eggs, decorations of your choice, stickers of your choice, moss, paint, tissue paper, Mod Podge, and ribbon. The egg originally looked like a soccer ball and took about three coats of spray paint. I used the same technique to get this image onto the tissue paper as I did in my last video, which I will link below. Uh, you can also check out the Schwoven's Nest, which is where I got the original idea. You're going to need Mod Podge to apply blank pieces of tissue paper all around the egg. I'm smoothing out the tissue paper here, but I'm really not too worried about wrinkles because I want it to make a textured look to the egg, almost like a paper mache.
As you can see, I'm not putting any of the blank pieces on the top of the egg because that part will be reserved for the printed version. I found this image online by searching for French country Easter. Um, if you were to search online, you could probably find this or a similar one. Here I'm just doing my best to make sure there are no real distinct big wrinkles on the front of the image. If there are wrinkles along the sides, I'm okay with that. I just want to make sure that the image is as clear as possible. I have torn uh, and crinkled up some pieces of tissue paper to cover up the edges of this printable. I'm not sure where the rest of my footage went, but after this had dried, I went over the whole egg with a white and various shades of brown to give it a vintage look. Now we're moving on to our second egg. This is a ceramic one I found at the Dollar Tree and the color and the monogram don't matter because we are going to be covering it with moss. We're going to put a layer of hot glue and just roll it in the moss. Um, it took about two coats to completely cover the egg. Next, we're going to give it a quick haircut before we roll it in moss again.
and here it is all covered in the moss. Before I continue, I'm going to give it a quick shot of triple thick just to seal that moss in so it doesn't go everywhere. I found these gorgeous brooch um, stickers from the Dollar Tree and knew I had to use them for this project. Also, the pearl ribbon and the lace ribbon are also from the Dollar Tree. I am always on my social media platform, so I would love it if you would connect with me there. The links for those are located in my description box. Now on to our third and final egg. This is going to be a mini diorama, and so you will need one of the eggs that has the clear top to it, and any type of stickers or printout that you wanna use. I found these stickers and fell in love with the scene and knew I had to put them in this little egg. Here I am taking the background of the sticker and I will be placing that inside the egg to create a backdrop for our diorama.
I'm going to use these foam stickers to add a little more dimension to some of the properties of our DIY. I'm not gonna lie, the background placement took forever. So thankful for the magic of editing and television, right? And now that the hard part's done, it's time to accessorize. I'm using the foam stickers in this instance to help lift the flower pot so it can be easily seen through the moss. And then any of the foam sticker that is showing, I am covering with additional moss. If you have enjoyed this video, I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel. And also feel free to comment below which of the DIYs was your favorite. I think my favorite is this one, actually. Please also consider liking and sharing my video, especially if you have any friends or family who may enjoy these DIYs as well. I'm attaching these tumbling tower blocks to the egg at a slight angle, so that way it's easier to see the inside of the egg. I do end up painting these black later, And here's the final result. I hope you enjoyed spending this time with me as much as I have with you. And until I see you in the next video, take care.